It's the winter of 2022-23 and Stuart Collins, chef patron of Docket 33, comes to Netherton Foundry to make the first ever copper perspective pan and in exchange he teaches Netherton to cook some of his favourite dishes. But first, here's Stuart unwrapping the pan. Yeah. Even more. The black tissue is special actually, it, okay. prote it protects the copper. Because if it's sitting in the packaging for a long time, it's got to be acid free. So, ah. so it, it's, it's functional paper that one. I'm going to tear into it like a child. Oh. The right, mm. dig, dig in. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. There we are. That's right. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, and there we are. And you've got your initials are on there. Absolutely amazing. For me, the thing with the copper pan is one, it's with the cooking, it's also with the presentation. Mm. It looks beautiful Definitely. and it's yeah. a wonderful thing. Um, <clears throat> so, we've got a big cheese souffle, um, shakshuka, wonderful for me, I think it's delicious. Yeah. Great sort of thing as well, something for breakfast, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And now for the first recipe. Sue from Netherton joined Stuart in the kitchen. Um, we're going to start off just by um, starting to warm the pan. Keep it on a low heat just while we prepare the veg. Um, just to get it to warm through. Obviously, the beauty of the copper pan super conductive, so all that heat yep. comes out. Uh, so super low heat just while we start preparing. It's a wonderful red onion. For me, it's just that slightly more sort of fruity, softer flavour than the white onion. Bit sweeter. That's it. <clears throat> Absolutely delicious. Mm. And we've got a lovely. And it adds colour. Indeed. We've got a lovely um, rapeseed oil. So we get that going in there. Good amount, in my opinion. Brings a lot of flavour, lovely little richness to the dish. And then we're just going to start by finely chopping some red onion. Doesn't have to be too perfect, too. And then we just finely slice some garlic. So slice some garlic and crush it. Yeah, for me with this dish, it's nice to actually <laughs> get almost a little bit of that garlic in there when as you eat it. Crushing makes the garlic much stronger, doesn't it? It releases so, yes. some chemical within the yeah within the bowl. So with the, with the onion as well, you know, my sharp knife, that stops the eye watering, you want to understand. So, pan not too hot, oil nice and, uh, nice and warm, and we're going to go in, and all being well, we'll get a nice little start to fry it. Now for me, always with uh, onion, garlic, add a pinch of salt at the beginning, and that helps to start to draw out that moisture. So it brings out all of these, uh, the excess water, concentrate the flavour, mm. and start to develop the flavour. For me, seasoning a dish as we go along helps to develop those flavours. That's too wonderful. Not too small on the onion or garlic. I like that little bit of texture as you're eating it. You sort of want that, to, uh, want that to continue. And nice and gentle, so we're not getting a quick browning on the onions. We're just softening them. Over. Absolutely, as you say, that sweetness, bringing it out, allowing that to develop. Again, similar shape, so it all sort of cooks around the same time. Ah, oh, that's my favourite way of getting the seeds out, it's brilliant. The, the best jobs in the kitchen. Yeah. So, you can slice this down. Would you consider using multicoloured peppers, or do you just want the red for the sweetness? Absolutely, I'm a big fan of the green. I like that sort of bitterness, that sort of mm. contrasting flavour. For me, it's a lovely little addition. Yellow, again, you get a lot of sweetness from it. Yellow or orange, a lot of sweetness from it. So. I think the green pepper is somewhat underrated. Absolutely, I'm a big fan. All that pepper, we need to just start bringing out some of that moisture, allow it to cook down. So we're turning the temperature up ever so slightly. Beautiful, non stick as well, so, you know, nothing sticking, no caramelization. I'm going to cook this down for two to three minutes, just allow it to start to sort of soften and all those flavours come out. And we're going to use two types of tomato. We've got some fresh tomatoes and some tin tomatoes, tin baby tomatoes. For me it brings the best of both worlds. You get that lovely freshness from the, obviously the fresh ones, and that slightly sort of more concentrated flavour yeah. with the tins. So a bit of both in there. Are you going to put the tomato juice in or just the... We're trying to get the most of the tomato. A little bit of the juice as well, I find, is always good. Brings, uh, again, allow that to cook down, brings that little richness to the dish. So, before we do that, in with a little paprika. Not too much. Just to uh, bring a little warmth. Is that a sweet or a smoke? 
This is a sweet. You could use smoked. Um, there's like a little bit of that flavour in there. And then put that out in the oil so you can just see now the oil's taking on all that flavour. You can move this dish, it's so versatile. You can take the spice, you can add some cumin, you can add some fennel, fenugreek, you can add anything you want. It's, uh... So, we're going to go in fresh tomatoes first, just to give them a chance. And I don't, for me, I just break the skins and then just drop them in. And it will just allow them to break down nice and natural as we go on. I think this is nice though, because you can purchase some tomatoes a bit more oomph as well. Yes, yeah. Indeed, absolutely, absolutely. And these are wonderful. The these, are, these are lovely little babies. You can see the colour. Mm. I tried a couple of those actually, and they're, they're lovely. They've got that sweet and sharpness in there as well. Let's give these one one minute just to start to break down. And again, I like you know the flavour and the, the texture as you go through the dish. So you're going to get sort of elements of that. Um, Pepper and the onion, and of course, those lovely fresh tomatoes. You see the tomatoes just start to open up there as the skin is cooked. Now, we'll go in with some of these tomatoes. As you say, we're going to take, take the tomatoes, not too much of the juice, we go a little bit of that as a good thing. <laughs> this is it, and it, you know, and it looks fantastic, doesn't it? It looks Absolutely. beautiful, as you say, nice and colourful, nice and inviting. About a few minutes to cook down. You want that real sort of rich tomato sort of uh, tomato stew. Isn't it? You want that lovely flavour, nice and rich. The onions have cooked out lovely, the garlic's obviously softened, paprika's cooking out and the seasoning, and that's all just getting that into. That base could be used for so many other things though, couldn't it? You could. Absolutely. Or if you really wanted to, you could mix it in with a soup out yes. of it. Yes. Chuck some pasta in. Yep. Very, very versatile. Yeah. Absolutely. Looks great. Smells wonderful. Lovely it bit really of spice. We haven't delicious. got a smelly dish in, have we? <laughs> Be nice. Unfortunately not. Alright, so while this cooks down, we're going to chop some coriander. Um, nice and rustic. Again, for me, I like that sort of, as you eat it, you get sort of the bigger pieces. It doesn't need to be too fine. Lots and lots of flavour. And every single mouthful being slightly different. Sort of, you know, a nice little adventure as you go through it. How do you use mature? Love it. Love it? Good. Yeah, we'll put it live. Gonna... So you can see cooking down. Absolutely delicious. One more minute and then we're going to drop these beautiful eggs. Just going to do three. So we're going to build like a little well, mm -hmm. turn the temperature down, drop the three eggs in there, um, lid on the top just to create that steam, just to gently cook the eggs. Season it last minute with some fresh black pepper just on top. Right, so start to make the, uh, the indent for the eggs. Really important for me, room temperature eggs when these go in. Um, much debate as to whether you should keep them in your fridge or not, but even if you don't, uh, if you do, bring them out in advance, just allow them to room up. It helps the cooking process. It's no argument here. Um, don't keep them in the fridge. Yes, so there we go. So we're going to go. Beautiful colour on those eggs. Yeah, superb. Two. There we go. So eggs in, and you can see them cooking away in that lovely tomato sauce. All that flavour coming in. Turn the temperature down, nice and gentle, just, just gently cooking away. A little bit more seasoning on top of the egg. So all that flavour's underneath now, tiny little bit on top. 
we get the black pepper ready to sprinkle on top. I'm just going to drop a lid on there, so you see. Yeah. Um, just for one minute, and all that steam, the evaporation has been tomato, will just cook down on top of the uh, on top of the egg. It's just been cooking just for a minute or two. Absolutely wonderful. The eggs are just cooked in there. Tomato sauce is simmered right down, which is absolutely delicious. Concentrated those flavours. Looks delicious, doesn't it? So we're going to go on. Lots of fresh, uh, fresh cracked black pepper. And then to finish, your wonderful chopped coriander. And now back to the workshops. Master craftsman Colin teaches Stuart how to spin copper disc into a prospector band body. They're using a spinning machine made in Birmingham in the 1920s. So we're going to use the wonderful copper pan. We're going to use this as a real sort of beautiful presentation aid. You know, they're truly phenomenal. Uh, we know they cook really well, but they're also absolutely beautiful. So we're going to make an amazing hake uh, cooked on papillon. Wow. Now we've got this uh, wonderful film that we're going to cook the fish in. It's called Carta Fatter. So it's a clear, transparent cooking film. Uh, so then this will go yeah, to the I've table. Heard of that. That sounds exciting. And the fish will be in a beautiful bag. And then when you cut it at the table, you get that beautiful aroma. And the fish will be absolutely perfect and again we can serve straight from the pan onto a plate okay so we beautiful steamed fish and for me we want to keep that flavor the concentration so we're going to use some vegetable base within the bag right and the and the moisture and the, that come from the vegetables will help to steam the fish so there's no dilution so we've got some wonderful uh, braised fennel so we'll simply cook that in a very light uh, vegetable stock a little clove of garlic in there and some fresh lemon peel. Lemon and fennel. Wonderful. Perfect. Lovely pinch of salt in there, a little bit of pepper as well. So the fennel is, is cooked already, just cooked. We'll prep that down in a moment. And then just in here in some simple uh, salted water, we've got some courgette and some beautiful uh, tender stem broccoli. You can use anything you want. For me, this is all about colour, a little bit of texture, a little bit of flavour. You know, to go with the fish, hake, very delicate, so we don't want anything too strong. Uh, but again, when we open that bag, you're going to get all those wonderful textures and, and the aroma will be superb. That's interesting because most people wouldn't think about poaching or boiling the courgette. Yeah, just take the edge <laughs> off of it, just yeah. to sort of tenderise it. And then when it goes in the bag, of course, it will carry on cooking. It's only going to be in the oven for sort of six to eight minutes. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that it's nice and tender. So we drain those off. And then we're going to sweat down the spinach as well, uh, and that will form the, the base of the bag. So we'll start with that. So nice hot pan, a little bit of oil. The spinach is wonderful, of course, because it's got water content. Yep. It's a nice hot pan. You want to sort of hear that slight little crackle, good amount of seasoning, and then let it well, let it you know, cook it quick. We don't want it to, to stew, we want to retain that lovely uh, freshness. So get the pan nice and warm, straight in with the spinach. And then you, it's wonderful because you stir it, obviously, you stir it twice and then you just sear it. So oil nice and warm, and see it's just getting nice and warm there. 
then we'll go across those and we're going to go straight in. There's the top. There's the top. A little seasoning while that's going. And then all that natural sort of the water will come out of the spinach. Steam the spinach as it cooks. Roll it down. Mm, that lovely dark green. Absolutely. Our spinach, the courgettes and broccoli from before. Those in here. And we've got our lovely piece of fennel that have been lightly braised in the poaching liquid. So we've got the lemon and the garlic and the seasoning in there. So I'm just going to gently trim off the, the base of the fennel and then just cut this down into you know pieces that you think about now when it's going to go onto the plate. So nice sort of slender pieces and you'll see when it all comes together these all form a beautiful base to the dish and fennel's completely transformed when you cook it isn't it it's, it's amazing like, it's a totally wonderful. different vegetable quite a gentle flavor yeah very very gentle um but absolutely delicious lovely raw as a salad though again totally different yes and a, a sort of a good uh, soaks up a lot of flavour. Mm. Again, if you drop some coriander seeds in that braise, or anything, you know, sort of slightly more thyme is wonderful with it as well. Mm. So, absolutely delicious. Beautiful fillet of hake here. So, all I've done is taking the skin off the back of it. Uh, beautiful, uh, nice and clean. Taking all the pin bones out. Everything's good to go. Now it's cutting it down into as big or as little as you like. Obviously, we're going to go into the wonderful pan. So, good healthy uh, portion through the middle there. Nice. Now we bring in the magical foil, magical cooking paper. So this is called Carter Fata and it's a transparent cooking film. We're going to use two layers just to make sure there's no uh, issues. We'll start building the base of the dish with the vegetables first. So we've got that lovely seasoned delicious spinach to go on the bottom for little courgettes to go in there fantastic little tender stem broccoli again we want all that seasoning in the bottom mm -hmm. the fish is going to sit on top and as we said all that natural flavor is going to steam the fish help to season it as well and then of course the beautiful pieces of fennel are just going to sit in there lovely uh yeah, great little salad. A few peas in there would be lovely. Anything else that we want to add in? Asparagus when it's in season. Asparagus would be absolutely perfect. Broad beans. Yep, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely, you know, delicious. It looks inviting. I'm going to take a beautiful fresh lemon and just peel one or two fresh pieces of the zest. And that, you can smell it immediately. That aroma will just cook into the bag and steaming with a, with a wonderful piece of fish on top. So the hake itself, season up, nice and generous seasoning. A little salt on there. You can add some pepper as well. A little magic ingredient. We've got a yuzu vinegar. You could so explain what yuzu is. So yuzu is a Japanese citrus fruit, somewhere between a lemon and a lime. Maybe a little bit more sweeter, sort of like a Maya lemon and a lime. Um, but this little vinegar, it's not too, it's more like a, a Chardonnay, like a white wine vinegar. Um, not too oh, punchy, like but it's, you know, got that element of sweetness. We're just going to put a little drizzle of that in there, and that will help to steam the fish as well. Cut through some of the, uh, the, the richness of the dish. Just in there. Because we're not going to find yuzu in our local greengrocer in Shropshire, are we? But there's so many... Using products yes. that you can get, which is just it's a, slight, a bit. Yeah, it's like different sort of uh, mm. than, than perhaps what we'd be used to. But a lovely, lovely ingredient to add in. All the same. I've got some yuzu salt. Perfect. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. that would be, be great. Lovely on this. Yeah, anything that matches those wonderful fish flavours and the vegetables mm. to bring it all together. So, a little spoonful of the cooking liquid from the fennel. And then we're going to bring the bag together, tie that up with some string, and this is ready for the oven. This to me is perfect, you know, if you're doing a, a dinner party, 
you could make these up in advance, leave them in the fridge ready to go, bring them out 15, 20 minutes before you need to cook it, and then you'll see them when we cook it. It's really, really simple. So this, you probably better this than me, is lovely. Bring it together just as a little parcel. You want to leave a bit of space. Don't want to wrap it too tight. You want space for the bag to expand and string. Quite a lot about wrapping things in paper. <laughs> yeah, you don't keep your fingers. Now cut the string. And the only thing we need to make sure is just the top of the paper is going to touch the top of the oven. Uh, so you can trim that down ever so slightly, ready to be cooked. So we're now going to warm the wonderful copper pan to the pot. Give it a minute to warm up so all that heat sort of goes out so it's not too centralised in the middle. And then we'll put the bag in. And that will slowly fill up. The liquid will start to steam. And then we'll go into the oven eight to 10 minutes until it's just cooked. And the beauty of this is, of course, it's lovely and gentle. So, you know, it's slightly forgiving on the cooking. Gives it a minute or two either side, which is, helps with the cooking there. And uh, all that flavor concentrated inside. And it looks like a present. It's wonderful. The yeah, excitement it as it comes to the dining table, of course, and then we'll cut and the bag open. It and the smell will just. Yep. So the fish has been in the oven now for about eight minutes. We can see the bag's nice and full and you can start to smell it cooking, which is delicious. So we're going to bring it out. Looks absolutely wonderful. Put it back on the heat and that will just allow the bag to fill. And if you'd like to, Sue, take the scissors and just very gently just cut underneath where the string is and the bag should pop open. There we go. And inside. Oh, wow. There's this wonderful, gently steamed piece of fish with all those veggies and that wonderful sauce in the bottom. You take the pan now to the table and serve this. It's not a prospector pan until it has handles. The next stage involves Chef Stewart operating one of our antique fly presses to punch holes in the pan. He's assisted here by expert pan builder Ryan. Then using another fly press, he securely attaches each handle with two solid copper rivets. about this one is cooking and presentation. Okay. So we're gonna make a wonderful cheese souffle. Oh so nice big cheese souffle, something that nice. we can then take to the table. Yeah, yeah fingers of... crossed. Yeah. And obviously we can serve it in the pan on the table, but a wonderful little chicory and apple salad to go with it. A meal in one, wonderful. A real sort of <gasps> indeed well hopefully hopefully fingers crossed. So we're gonna start by just preparing the pan itself. So I've just rubbed a little bit of uh, softened butter around to grease the pan and then we're going to uh, microplane some fine parmesan into it and what that will do is just cause a love uh, create a lovely crust on the outside of the souffle as it cooks a little bit of flavor of course and it will stop the souffle from sticking to the pan okay i'll just pop that to one side whilst we prepare the rest of the mix so, whilst I get on with cooking this soup, could I ask, can you kindly grate me the I cheese here? Eat. If you want to jump on that side. So on the fine grater, that would be wonderful. Right. All of it? Yeah, perfect. So we've got two types of cheese. There's a gruyere, so slightly nutty, a little bit fruity in there. And then we've got some parmesan, which is obviously very salty uh, and delicious. Two cheeses work really well together, in, in my opinion. Whilst you're grating that up, in here we've got some butter, 40 grams of butter. We're going to melt the butter, add some flour so we're going to make a roux. And we're going to add some milk into it, a couple of teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and then four 
egg yolks. Are you adding cold milk to your roux? I do. You could warm it up. You could infuse it with onion. Or bay. Bay. Uh, cloves are delicious. Um, lots and lots nutmeg. Of nutmeg is another good one, of course. Yeah. And you can add all of that into there. Anything that works with cheese is, is absolutely delicious. You can even put some onion through this, some shallot, melt it down so that as it cooks, obviously that's going to go straight into the um, into the souffle as well. So again, a lovely versatile dish. The butter, we don't want to colour it, of course. And then in with 40 grams of flour. Mix that in with the butter and we want to cook that out for a minute just to sort of get rid of that raw flour flavour, just gently over a nice medium heat, not burning it, just nice and gentle later. So in with a little splash of milk. And as you're adding the milk, you want to incorporate it so that the, uh, the roux becomes sort of smooth at each stage before we add too much of it. Otherwise it does run the risk of it going lumpy. So in with the milk. So it becomes nice and smooth. You can use a whisk as well. I mean, I like using a spoon because you, you get to sort of feel, sometimes with a, a whisk, you miss a little bit on the bottom of the pan, for the both. So we've got 300, uh, 300 grams of milk here. So um, 40 flour and 40 butter and 300 grams of the milk. So this will start to soften out, uh, smoothen out, sorry. and. We need to allow it to cool just before we put the egg yolk in, otherwise it's going to be too hot. How's your uh, souffle success record? Not bad. Not bad? But they don't look as spectacular as those that turn up on MasterChef <laughs> GBM, but they're tasty. So while we're waiting for this soup, could you mm -hmm. kindly just break some of these chicory leaves off of here? Mm -hmm. Just peel them back and make them drop into there, yep. that's all good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Another underused and underrated vegetable, I think. Yeah, lovely with the, um, to go against the cheese there, you got that lovely bitterness. You can dress it with a little bit of uh, lemon and uh, rapeseed oil. And then the apples in there as well, so you get that lovely bit of freshness. So, nice with blood orange at this time of year. Very much, yeah, really, really nice. Really nice. Okay. So, all the milk's in there. You get that cooking, uh, back up and bring it back to a gentle simmer, nice and smooth, and the mix will become nice and thick. And that's the perfect base for the souffle. Would you kindly separate these eggs for me? We need yep. the whites into there, please. And we'll just get you a bowl for the yolks. So we've got four, four eggs, large. We're gonna whisk up the four egg whites and we'll keep the yolks to go in this mix. And we'll take that lovely meringue and mix that, mix that into here. Definitely no yolk and no meringue. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So the roux is nice and smooth. I'm just gonna take that off the heat for a few minutes, allow it to cool down ever so slightly, and then we'll go in with the mustard and those lovely uh, egg yolks, along with all that cheese, so it become really, really nice and thick. Let's get these on the machine, slowly whisk it up. I want just allow it to cool down. And a couple of generous teaspoons of Dijon mustard in there. And mix up through. And then while the mix is nice and uh, nice and warm, we're going to add the cheese to get all that incorporated. So we've got a white grated cheese, absolutely perfect. Wonderful, thank you. So cheese in there. We're going to add the egg yolks in one minute. Right, so we've got the egg whites that have come off the machine. Now I don't know if this is true, but I always start the machine off slow let those sort of bubbles create so you end up with millions of little bubbles and then turn it up so it's nice and fast so you've got like lots of little building blocks inside the meringue that keep it nice and stable um, I'm not sure if that actually works but so far it's served me well I shall remember that <laughs> so 
the cheese mix here. Uh, we've got so that's the roux with the mustard and the cheese in there. We're going to add in the egg yolks to enrich in it. Mix those in, and then we're going to fold this into the egg whites and beautiful, you know, sharing dish. So the star of the show in the centre of the table. Could add onion, as we said. Mm -hmm. What we've got to go in here is some chopped chives. Then we go into the mix. Beautiful chop, uh, fresh chives just chopped through. I'm just going to mix that in, and then as the souffle bakes up, they're going to run through the middle of the souffle. Lots of flavour. And again, because they're fresh, it's got that lovely sort of light onion flavour running through. Perfect marriage to the to the cheese. We don't want to add them in too early because it will sort of kill the freshness. Yeah. So last minute. Right, we've got our wonderful egg white meringue. Let's cut back in. Nice and firm, but not uh, over whisk. And then we'll go in in two, three parts. One just to soften the mix. And then we can fold in the others, really retaining that air. about the small bubbles that this very very frothy egg whites mm. we'll see but, very, <laughs> but quite firm yeah i need to whisk my egg whites a bit more but i do it with a balloon whisk so i just have to rest the arm from time to time indeed indeed we're uh, i'm not a great baker i stick to what i know <laughs> to go in. It can be quite robust folding that in, can't you? You don't have to be unbelievably delicate. I think so. I think as long as you've got a good meringue. Yeah then it will hold mm. up and you know again for me I don't think it has to be entirely smooth the odd little sort of um, amount of the meringue is, is absolutely fine uh, versus sort of you know beating it so it's entirely smooth but right there we go lovely so the cedar mix is lovely nice and mixed in absolutely perfect so we've got our lined uh, pan with the Parmesan in it again, which is going to create that lovely crust on the outside. We're going to go in with our mix. We're probably not going to need all of this. We pour it in nice and light till it's about two thirds full. Okay. You could butter yourself a little ramekin, have a little tester on the side there, so there's no waste. Absolutely perfect. And then on top of this. We're going to take some more parmesan and we're going to grate this on and then as this bakes up you're going to get a lovely golden crust on top where the cheese is melted in and again from that seasoning you're going to get that lovely toasted nutty salty cheese on top absolutely perfect now we're going to go into the oven 190 for 10 minutes and then we're going to drop it down to 170 for 20. Just reduce that golden, where it yeah. can get too too sort of dark on top. But that heating, of course, the wonderful pan with that even heat uh, coming through, this is going to be brilliant. Yeah, so you get the nice brown without it still being raw in the middle. Indeed. Cooking all the way through. Yep. Yeah. All right. Right then, Sue. So the souffle has been in for uh, 10 minutes at 190, 20 minutes at 170, risen up lovely, absolutely golden, all that parmesan that we grated on top 
is now lovely and golden, wonderful little crust. So I'm gonna bring it out. We've got a very simple, delicious chicory apple, a little bit of lemon zest in there, uh, fresh lemon juice and a good amount of uh, rapeseed oil. And we're gonna bring this out. I cannot wait to see it. That is incredible. So look at that, just oh, wobbling. Oh my goodness, that is, look at that wobble. Absolutely perfect. Let Let's go. open. Absolutely perfect. Wow. Lovely and light. You can see the chive in there, it's absolutely perfect. Lovely crust on top. Absolutely perfect. Lovely and light. You can see the chive in there, it's absolutely perfect. Lovely crust on top. Adding the finishing touch, Stuart proudly stamped his initials onto the handle. A delicious sort of one pound wonder, beautiful uh, vanilla and cinnamon uh, with a coconut rice pudding. Oh, yum. Okay, so lots going on in there. Very simple, very simple dish. Uh, very sort of humble ingredients, but all together, you know, little bits of um, cinnamon in there, which is delicious. Little few flecks of the lime zest in there, so a little bit of zing going on. Beautiful, fresh vanilla, straight from the bean. And of course, really good, full fat coconut milk. Okay. Lime and coconut, perfect. Amazing. Yeah, and just sort of taking, you know, a very simple dish to, to hopefully a slightly different place and um, lots and lots of flavor in there. So we're gonna start off with the coconut milk. and Pour that in the pan. And then into this we can add the uh, ingredients and we'll gently bring that to a simmer to start infusing with the flavour. So nice low temperature just to start to get that to warm up. First thing we're going to look at, beautiful vanilla bean. Absolutely packed full of those wonderful little seeds. Gently scrape that down. And we're going to go through the middle of the bean. And then just using the tip of the knife, go through the side and you get all of these beautiful seeds that come up and they're all going to impart loads of flavour into the milk. Do the same on the other side. And then because there's still lots of seeds in the pod, we're going to drop the pod in as well. Okay, so all those that we've scraped out will come off and then more will carry on as that starts to warm up. We added a little bit of fresh milk as well. You could use a uh, nut-based milk if you wanted to, um, but a little bit of milk just to sort of reduce a bit of that richness of the coconut milk. Into here as well, beautiful uh, cinnamon stick. You could use ground cinnamon if that's what you had. Beautiful cinnamon stick, again, just allows that flavor to come through. So turn the heat up ever so slightly. Then we've got fresh lime. Beautiful fresh lime, fine grater. I'm just going to zest, take the zest and allow that to go into the milks. A good amount, of course, that classic sort of uh, coconut and lime, you know, great, great combination. And people worry about adding citrus to dairy products, but if you're just using the zest and it's going into a coconut milk, you're not going to have an issue, are you? No, it won't, it won't split or anything, it won't have a, an issue. And that zest obviously is where all the flavour is absolutely wonderful. So it's just coming up to a simmer. And we want that flavour just to start to come together before we add in the rice. Now, we've got here some wonderful honey. So instead of using sugar, we're going to use honey to sweeten it. Um, you could use any other sort of sweetening, like coconut sugar or agave or anything. But we're going to use this honey, and that will just melt in and bring that lovely little sweet element to the dish. And we'll just let all of this come together for a few minutes. Now, this is exciting because you can start to see all those flecks of that wonderful uh, vanilla coming apart all those little uh, lime zest floating around in the milk. Absolutely wonderful. And that honey's just melted down, infusing lovely into there. So, <laughs> <laughs> scatter the rice in. And just 
let that start to cook as we're whisking up the mascarpone and egg. Whisk up some mascarpone yeah. and two egg yolks. And what we'll do, we'll fold that into the mix before it goes into the oven. And you make it really rich. Very, very rich. Luxurious. And those egg yolks just sort of will gently cook as it's in the oven. Um, yeah, really uh, a lovely sort of decadent addition to a very humble dish. So, uh, rice has been just ticking along there for a, for a few minutes and you can see it just starting to take on all that lovely uh, the vanilla, the coconut milk, the lime is in there which is delicious. I'm going to let this down ever so slightly, turn the heat off now and then just add a tiny little bit of the milk just to slow down the cooking process. Otherwise when we add the egg and the mascarpone it can be a little bit too warm. You can see already it's looking nice and you know, really rich, really full of flavour. So the egg and the mascarpone is like a very rich egg custard that Indeed. you're adding to it. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of um, the basis of almost like a crepe patisserie, that sort of idea. So we put a good spoonful in. No, it looks like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to mix that in, make sure it's all clean down those edges just to stop any of it catching, get that custard mixed in lovely. We've got the oven preheated at 180 and we're going to go in there for 10 to 12 minutes, keep an eye on the top of the rice pudding, want that lovely golden colour to come up. This is quite a scalable recipe, isn't it? So you could be serving this for you know, a couple of people and could scale it up to do Absolutely. eight, yep. ten, just as long as you've got a pan big enough. That's right. That's absolutely right. Nice, simple dish. And then just before it goes in the oven, a little bit more of that lime zest. Just to get that lovely sort of roasted flavours going on. There we go. It's going to go straight across into the oven, 10 minutes. Look at those egg yolks, absolutely beautiful. Into the mascarpone. What an amazing colour. Yeah, it's wonderful. And that will just obviously, you know, enrich in that um, the rice pudding, both in colour and texture and flavour. We'll start until it's nice and smooth. And with the rice pudding, we don't want to cook it too quick. If you sort of boil it, the outside of the rice cooks before the middle bit, then it will sort of get mushy. So a nice, just ticking along, nice gentle cooking, just simmering. So the rice starts to soak up all that flavour. And you can see it gently starts to thicken. And the a beautiful vanilla and the cinnamon on top. Give that a couple more minutes before we add the mascarpone mix and then we'll fold that through and place that into the oven. So what we need to do with this now is just leave it to simmer for a couple more minutes and then we will fold in the mascarpone and the egg yolk and we'll place that into the oven at 180 for 10 to 12 minutes just until it's just cooked Nice and uh, just soft, lovely and rich, and the rice should be lovely and tender. Soak up all that milk, lovely bit of lime, delicious. Uh, rice has been just ticking along there for a, for a few minutes, and you can see it just starting to take on all that lovely uh, the vanilla, the coconut milk, the lime is in there, which is delicious. I'm gonna let this down ever so slightly, turn the heat off now, and then just add a tiny little bit of the milk just to slow down the cooking process. Otherwise, when we add the egg and the mascarpone, it can be a little bit too warm. You can see already it's looking nice and you know, really rich, really full of flavour. So the egg and the mascarpone is like a very rich egg custard that Indeed. you're adding to it. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of um, the basis of almost like a crepe patisserie, that sort of idea. So we put a good spoonful in. No, it 
looks like an egg. <laughs> so we'll mix that in. To make sure it's all clean down those edges just to stop any of it catching. Get that custard mixed in, lovely. We've got the oven preheated at 180 and we're going to go in there for 10 to 12 minutes. Keep an eye on the top of the rice pudding. I want that lovely golden colour to come up. This is quite a scalable recipe, isn't it? So you could be serving this for you know, a couple of people and you could scale it up to do Absolutely. eight, yep. ten, just when we've got a pan big enough. That's right. That's absolutely right. It's a nice, simple dish. And then just before it goes in the oven, a little bit more of that lime zest. Just to get that lovely sort of roasted flavours going on. There we go. So we're going to go straight across into the oven, 10 minutes. And there we have it, beautiful. Oh, look at that. Just set, just wobble, wobbling. Lovely crust on top, not too golden. You can take a little bit more if that's, that's your thing. Lime, wonderfully caramelised, smells phenomenal. Rice pudding skin is a great divider, but yes, shall we? The people who don't like it are just wrong. And there we go. Look at that. It's beautiful, rich. All those wonderful little vanilla seeds in there. Lovely bit of fresh lime. Not too set. Lovely and rich. Absolutely perfect. Perfect even cooking. Absolutely brilliant. If this whetted your appetite. Book an amazing dining experience with Stuart and his team at Docket 33 in Whitchurch, Shropshire. Recreate these fabulous dishes and so much more at home using our beautiful Netherton Foundry Copper Prospector Pans.